corruption in California's elected leaders is front and center nationwide. Following this war of words between U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions and Oakland's Mayor Libby Schaff. So here's my message to Mayor Schaff. How dare you? How dare you needlessly endanger the lives of our law enforcement officers to promote a radical open borders agenda? How dare you distort the reality about declining violent crime in a diverse sanctuary city like Oakland, California to advance your racist agenda? In the minutes after Sessions spoke, Mayor Schaaf tweeted that Oakland's crime rate has dropped dramatically over the past several years, during which time Oakland was a sanctuary city. Pleased to have Oakland Mayor Libby Schaaf joining us in studio now. Uh, thanks for being here. Oh, thank you, Garcia. Certainly a busy day for you yesterday, and I'd like to follow up on something that the AG said when it comes to putting law enforcement's lives at risk. He said being a law enforcement officer is already dangerous enough, but to give criminals a heads-up warning that we're coming in the next 24 hours increases that risk. Do you feel that you increase the danger to law enforcement with your warning to the community? I do not. Um, I have incredible respect for the difficult jobs that our law enforcement professionals do every day. But many law enforcement leaders have agreed that sanctuary policies actually make the city safer. They rely on good community relations. And in a city like Oakland, where one-third of our residents are immigrants, we rely on every part of our community to feel safe in calling 911, in reporting crime, and even serving as a witness to crime. And so that is public safety. When I gave uh, the information that I gave, first of all, it, it had been in the news, you know, two weeks earlier. It was, it was not a well-kept secret. Uh, but I was very careful to not give any specific locations or anything that Did could have... Did you have specific have, information? Uh, that could have endangered law enforcement officials. Did you have that information to give? Um, I'm not sharing that. Okay. Have you talked with the, I know OPD's chief is strongly with you in Oakland sanctuary city policy. Alameda County serves your city as does CHP. I know the undersheriff of Alameda County was in the room yesterday as Sessions was speaking. Have you talked with the undersheriff or anyone at CHP about sanctuary cities? Uh, I have not. Um, I know that the sheriff, uh, Ahern, has actually been quite critical. Uh, he's been critical of my actions and he has not, uh, really embraced a lot of sanctuary policies and and that has been a conflict since oakland doesn't run a jail uh the sheriff runs all of the jail operations for anyone who actually is arrested in oakland and he is a separate elected official what about the concern that some might say you're prioritizing immigrants lives over that of law enforcement in uh, your warning just that is not the case um, my job is to run a safe city um, obviously, I've been very serious about crime. Part of that has been supporting our good, hardworking law enforcement officers that deserve praise for the incredible results that they've delivered in these last few years. 42% reduction in homicides, 50% reduction in shootings, 55% reduction in armed robberies, 61% reduction in home burglaries. And they've done that while really advancing their profession. How are you supporting them if you're giving people who could and should be arrested a warning? Um, again, this warning was very general. Um, the pe people who are undocumented live in a heightened state of fear all the time. Um, my message was very clear that I did not want people to panic. I wanted them to know their rights and their responsibilities, as well as be aware of the unique resources that are available in our community. Um, we offer legal representation for people facing deportation. Um, often people may have come to this country without documentation, but they actually have the legal right to remain under various laws like political asylum laws. And yet if they don't have access to attorneys, uh, research shows that they stand a just tiny chance of succeeding in their uh, attempt to stay in the country legally. Legal representation is key, and that's why I'm very proud that here in Alameda County, uh, philanthropy and local governments have made that representation possible. But people need to know that. How can it be dangerous and illegal simply to tell people what the law is, 
what their rights are and what the resources are. About half of That's the about half of the 200 or so people who were arrested in Northern California ICE raids did have some sort of criminal background. Now, when ICE talks about criminal background, that includes uh, being deported and returning to the country. That's one of the felonies that they are counting in that total. Um, the fact that half had no criminal record at all, this is what illustrates the difference with this administration. Under Obama, law-abiding residents would often qualify for deferrals. And the, the perfect example is the Sanchez family, um, Eusebio and Maria Sanchez. She was a nurse in the oncology ward at Highland Hospital. They had lived in Oakland for 23 years. They had three children here. They had sent their kids through college, bought a house, gotten their own educations, paid taxes, and neither had ever committed a crime. But under this administration, their deferrals were ended and they were ripped apart from their family and sent back to Mexico where they had not been for 23 years. But you still feel that you're not prioritizing their lives over that of law enforcement or even those who are criminal immigrants in the United States. No, you're I'm holding on to that. That's my job to take care of everybody. Are you taking care of law enforcement if they're the ones, if your Alameda County Sheriff is frustrated with your actions and he serves your city? Gase, you'll have to ask them how they feel. Okay. Uh, I'd be happy to. I, it would, it would I be... feel that what I've done is consistent with the values of my city. Okay. The city of Oakland, I know you've said you're willing to go to jail to uphold let Oakland's me, sanctuary. Let me clarify that as well. That was in response to the ICE officials saying that they believed that elected officials of sanctuary cities should be arrested and sent to jail. So is that is political vindictiveness. Do you that I, is not a democratic society. The, the federal lawsuit names California Governor Jerry Brown. Is there any action against you that you know of? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, not that you're aware of. All right, since we have you here, let's talk about some happy news as well. Okay. Uh, we were at some groundbreaking uh, in the Fruitvale District for uh, almost 100 units of affordable housing. That's a project there, Casa Arabella, that, that you started on almost 20 years ago as a city aid. Yeah. It, it took too long. A lot of people say it cost way too much. Are you in favor of a bill that's proposed that would essentially force communities near BART stations to change their zoning to allow much higher buildings than what exists there now? So I believe we do have to look at our zoning and transportation systems like BART represent a tremendous public investment. And as we really have to get serious about climate change, getting people out of their cars and on to BART is not only good for people's lifestyles or not spending horrible hours in their cars away from their families, but it's also good for our environment. And that's why I am a huge supporter of transit-oriented development. Now, it's not like that building took 19 years. I mean, the entire Fruitfield Transit Village, phase one, sure. uh, obviously got up before then. Um, but it's a wonderful story because that whole development came out of BART wanting to build a parking garage that that literally turned its back on the Fruitvale community. Right. And Arabella Martinez is the one that really stood up for her community and said, no way. You should work with us. You should be interwoven with us and complement us. And here we are 20-something years later, well, and, and phase two is finally yeah. happening. But look at phase one, how it opens up the BART station to the community, how it pulls people in and connects the BART station with the traditional merchants as well as the new ones that are in the new buildings. It's a fabulous development. People come from all over the country to look at it, and Lord knows, Oakland needs the affordable housing. Absolutely. Okay, strides being made on the issue of affordable housing here in Oakland. Mayor Libby Schaff, I do appreciate your joining us. Certainly, I know your office and you yourself have been getting a lot of attention in recent days. It's good to be here at home. Thank you. Uh,